Welcome to Phoenix's Rising from the Ashes into Purpose. I am Tanil, your transitional coach, here to guide you through your journey back to higher self, the being the most high created you to be by revealing the mental weeds that have kept you repeating toxic patterns. Once removed, I give you the tools to heal those wounds and grow back in its place, God's truth about you. The goal is to get you walking in your purpose and power. I have available now an introductory course titled, So You Fallen, Who Said You Can't Get Up? for only $97. To get started, just click on the link in the description box to enroll. Also, check out the Cluster B playlist where I describe the tactics Cluster B disordered creatures use to break down their targets so that they're pliable. I love feedback, so never be afraid to leave a comment on this playlist or my Blue Phoenix Rising documentary series. Season one of BPR is detailing how I became homeless. Season two will be up sometime this year, 2021, so please have patience. Again, leave a comment and let me know if you can relate to these topics. Subscribe and share with someone who needs to hear they're not alone. Let's begin. My narcissistic father. When I was on the cold, merciless streets with my fur babies, after living with a cluster bee for two months, I went into deep reflection. It always felt as if my life was flashing before my eyes and God kept making connections to my childhood and situations I'd been in in the past or was currently experiencing. The last person I lived with reminded me of my father. I mean, she really didn't remind me of him, but I remember staring in awe at her and something other than me said, this is your dad. I never really knew my father. He wasn't much of a conversationist, not much of bonding uh, if he didn't have the intentions of having sex with you. He shouted orders, his children and wife were his servants. When I was placed in foster care, I read Roots, and it reminded me of how I grew up, and I would tell people I knew what it was like being Kunta Kinte. I was the lowest out of all of them because I was from a black mother. I am mixed race though, Blackfeet, Scottish Irish, and whatever tribe in the African diaspora. I think it's Kung, but I, I'll never know, so I'm not getting the test. Anyway, my real mother is the one that got away. He's never forgiven her for that. All of his bitterness and resentment towards her was transposed to me. And transposing is another cluster B tactic where they want to keep up the facade, but will use someone to throw up on. Uh, the cluster B will say and even do that which they can't do to the main partner. And my stepmother was white, and he was black. So I was the garbage can in my family. My father didn't show any interest in me at all. I think he was absolutely disgusted by me, though. I don't remember him asking anything about my favorite color, whether I was interested in Barbie or He-Man. He didn't care who I was or that I needed his attention and protection. He cared about my submission to him, that was it. He cared about being in control and worshiped since I was the only black female. I had to be subdued and the label that him and actually my uncles and cousins, male uncles and cousins, 
were that uh, had were that black women were aggressive. So, and I absolutely remember my father telling someone that the reason why he didn't date black women was because they hurt him during sex. Real shit. Uh, it made me <clears throat> think about um, a nurse probably, gee, many five years ago. Um, I was living somewhere else and was talking to one of my neighbors, and she was a, a nurse, and she said that there was a Mexican guy who came in with a bent worm, so to speak, just to keep it uh, PG at least. Uh, and I'm pretty sure he's still having sex with Mexican women, you know? <laughs> so I don't know. You got to put it in perspective. But anyway, um, my nickname with the family was Cinderella. My stepmother always told me that I was acting like the uh, martyr. But Cinderella was was what uh, they called me. So, and, you know, I was the one who washed the soot from the cigarette smoke and pot belly stove from the ceiling and uh, ran to get the king his ice water. So I guess it fit at that time. But, I, you know, I was never told a thank you by this man. The rest of my siblings acted as the flying monkeys. They mimicked what my father did and said. Things like, you're fat, you're ugly, no one likes you. You're going to end up in foster care, uh, which I did. <laughs> and they were light-skinned, and colorism was a part of the psychological abuse. I have been uh, there for my Cluster B father when things like you know his mother dying, my grandmother. I spoke when everyone just looked around and tried to avoid his pitiful gaze. I stood up because I was maybe his firstborn and spoke hollow words. It was my birthday that day as we were laying my grandmother to rest. My grandmother died in the physical. I was going through a spiritual death. I remember asking my father for money uh, when I was living with a partner and we were having hard times and I told him, I said, I never asked you for anything. And he said, yeah, I know. I mean, there wasn't much dialogue again. You know, people with cluster B mental illness have no desire to get to know you or bond with you or to, you know, in any way, shape or form relate to you. They just want to take. And he did say, he said, oh, okay, I'll, I'll send the rent. Uh, it never came, came and he never answered the phone. My father is borderline personality, narcissistic, psychopath, sociopath. He is the whole cocktail. And I am grateful that I got away from him. Some family members told me that he lived a double life because he went to a hotel known for gay men and bisexuals to, uh, in secret, do what they do. And uh, my uncle told me that uh, he tried to kill him, literally kill him, over a woman that he stole from him. He said that he would be dead if it wasn't for someone going and emptying out the shotgun. My aunt told me that my dad was normal until the day he got his head stuck underneath the merry-go-round. And, um, you know, they, it is said that... Uh, borderline or, you know, personalities and, and uh, psychopathy and all that can be triggered by a severe trauma. And, uh, you know, I have had severe trauma and I don't relate to yearning to literally destroy anyone, but maybe cluster B disordered people. Um, but I was reflecting on this while I was on the streets, surrounded by men and women like him gay, lesbian, straight, didn't matter. What I realized was that I was still being small. I was still believing that I was stupid, fat, and ugly and would never amount to anything. Isolated myself before being homeless, uh, thinking that that was going to keep me safe for a few years. And, uh, you know... <laughs> I was trying to fight that pattern without of, of being in abusive relationships. It didn't matter whether they were 
sexual in nature or just friendships. It was, I was always that one that was being devalued. So I had no safe haven out there on the streets. I was open, I was an open target and looked my father in many forms of other people in the eyes daily. So I gained the spiritual tools to defeat it. I let God guide me. I admitted that my father was mentally ill. And if I wouldn't have had that experience with the woman that I had lived with, with borderline personality for two months, and I would not have made that connection. So uh, I was always a child of God and he was jealous. That was something that I had never admitted to myself. Now, but now that I know the nature and the strategy of cluster bees, I realize that he was jealous because he saw a light in me that he couldn't have, or maybe that he lost underneath that merry-go-round, that he was bitter and still hoping that maybe, you know, God would save him. I don't know. I just think that he knew deep down I would be the one that got away just like my black mother. So let me know, what was your narcissistic father like? Leave a comment. Thanks for listening. I hope this helps someone to take the next step by clicking the link and getting on the introductory course called So You Fallen, who said you can't get up. Remember, your blessings are in your ashes. Rise, Phoenix, rise.